Let me show you just a momentary clip before Steve Clem says a couple of words that's from the elders' message back in November of 2010 when they passionately challenged this church. Weber, if you would. In order to reach more people for Christ and build true biblical community, this eldership has pledged to become more outwardly focused. We want to be the greatest gift of all, salvation through Christ, to as many people as we possibly can. We intend to model this new focus with our words, our actions, and our decisions as an eldership. We will ask each of you to do the same. This means that we must begin to see everything through one lens, making a real difference for Christ, an eternal difference. Our hope and prayer is that everyone at PR will want to take as many people to heaven with you as possible. It will take every member doing their part for us to become what God is calling us to be. The path forward may not always be smooth and easy, but we trust God. Thank you for your confidence in us, but even more, thank you for your confidence in God. We ask for your partnership and your prayers as we join together on this exciting journey with Him. If you were here, you might remember that about 18 months ago, uh, in 2010, we began talking to you pretty regularly to be thinking about what was next for each of us individually and for us as a church so that we could indeed make the biggest difference possible here in Charlotte to the people around us. We spent a lot of time and you spent a lot of time praying about that, thinking about that. I don't know what that meant in each of your individual lives, but last year in July, one of the things that it meant for this church was to begin a second service that was what we term contemporary, using instrumental music and an expanded role for women. Now I know for some that was a more difficult transition than for others. And uh, maybe even within families, there were some uh, moments of uh, tension. But there were some really good things that happened last year that I want to bring to your attention if you're not already aware. Number one, last year we baptized 58 people. 58 people came to know Jesus and expressed that by being baptized. That's a number that's bigger than any we've had in the last several years. And that's a number that this is all about. When we're talking about making a difference, it's about changing the direction on that chart so that that number is increasingly uh, large. I hope that this year that number's double that. Mm -hmm. And I hope in 2013 it's double again. Mm -hmm. But that recalls, that takes us really thinking about what's next constantly. Some other things that happened. We've had more people in our Welcome to PR class in the last few sessions than we have ever had before. Far more people are interested about finding out about this church, what we're about, and what it means to be a follower of Jesus here and with this family. We've served more people, uh, needy people. We've had more food requests. We've been able to serve those. We've had more nights of serving the homeless, and we'll continue that in 2012. Jeff mentioned the families that we've served this week on an all-week basis. You know, we've had room at the end for a while, typically with single people for one night a week during the winter. This was several families with kids who spent an entire week giving us much more opportunity to show the love of Christ to a family and what that means to, to what service for Christ really means. And we'll have more opportunities later this year to do the same thing. Many more people involved in various service projects. We began our partnership with the Lansdowne Elementary. And a lot of you have been involved in going over there for beautification type projects, tutoring students, giving gifts to teachers, helping out in a whole variety of ways. And in many other ways, you've served in, in the community beyond what I know about. I'd like to take a moment just to pray for what God has done for this church in 2011. Holy Father, we thank you so much for the many ways that you bless me individually and Father for blessing this church. Father, we're just so very thankful that you continue to bless us, to help us to reach out into our community, to bring the love of your Son to those that don't know it. 
Father, we just ask that you continue to do that in 2012 and beyond, that we can be an ever brighter, shining light in the community around us so that more and more people will know you and will have the opportunity to spend eternity with you. Mm -hmm. Because, Father, that's what we want to do. We glorify you in everything. I pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. But it's not finished. We're still asking, what's next? How can we ever increase our effectiveness at reaching the lost in our community? I hope you're asking that individually as well. What's next? That's n not a question that ever stops. Uh, we constantly want to be looking at how we become more effective. And we're going to spend just a few minutes here uh, talking about some of the exciting things that we have in store for us in 2012. And I'm going to let Jeff talk through some of that. Thank you, Steve. I also want to add my word of thanks and encouragement about the fact that uh, thanks to your sacrificial giving, we ended the year in the black. In fact, I don't know, about $16,000 to the good over and against our expenses. And it's always good to do that. Every family wants to be, you know, in the black at the end of the year. Our new giving and goal budget for uh, this next year is uh, 29000 a week. And for those of you who know, say, man, that's, we've actually kind of reduced that sum from last year. Well, actually, we're, we're pumping up a little bit over our expenses, but that's, that's a, a, a different budget number. I hope that you'd be praying about that. But now let me tell you what I'm really excited about. This coming fall, we're going to do something together that may be the most important thing we could possibly do. How many here have heard of something called the story? Anybody here have maybe friends in other church that maybe have used this? All right, let me, let me give you just a quick background. Does anybody here use an electronic Bible uh, on your phone, on an iPad, uh, you know, on something? H how many here at some point use one of those, maybe during the week on your computer? Okay, great. And then how many have a Bible that's made of something called paper? Uh, anybody own, own one of those? Okay, all right, good deal. Now, I, I, I don't want to put down either version, all right, but was talking to uh, an, an unnamed uh, teen the other day, and uh, I said, where's your Bible? And they held up their phone, so I got it right here. I said, now, wait a minute. I said, I I I'll race you. You tell me a scripture, and I'll find it before you can. Oh, give me a break. Well, boom, they did, because it just took two seconds, but of course, that scripture was the only thing on the screen. And I said, really, what's the context of that? Where in the Bible is that scripture? Well, that took us in a whole different direction. Do you know that today, biblical literacy across our country is measurably down? Preachers, teachers, folks in Bible colleges and Christian universities have been talking about the incoming freshmen not knowing the books of the Bible. Now, part of that is I've had actual, bright, committed Christian young people say, why do I need to learn the books of the Bible? My iPhone knows them. You know, why do I need to worry about that when I can just hit a couple of buttons and get it there? Well, there is something to the story of God from beginning to end and getting that context that I believe is very, very powerful. And this fall, we're going to launch a unique series called The Story Together. It'll begin in September. And what we're going to do is from every single Bible class and age group, from our preschoolers all the way through the adults, we're going to walk through the entire story of the Bible through our, uh, basically, be through a school year, starting in September and going all the way to May. 31 weeks. Now, that's the longest sermon series I have ever contemplated. And some of you are saying, Lord, take me now. I, 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 want, you, I want you to know we're just going to be studying through the Bible together and in our teen groups and in our life groups and at every level. And the more I've looked at this material, somebody says, that's kind of a no-brainer, isn't it? Absolutely. But there's so many other churches that have done it that they've added their material to the the website. If you want to see it, you can go to www.thestory.com and take a look at some of the things they've got there. But here's the shock that the churches found that began to try this together. They found that more people from their community were interested in coming and checking it out because they felt like they could get in on the ground floor. You know, if I get up as I did this morning and say, open your Bibles to Mark, you know, uh, uh, chapter 12. A bunch of you are going immediately, you know what Mark 12 is, but maybe you're here and you have felt kind of embarrassed because who's Mark and, and, and which 12 are, are we after here? 
So what we're going to do is invite our friends and neighbors into a journey that begins on the ground floor and walks through the whole of the story of God's Word together. Electronic, paper, whatever you got, we're going to walk through the whole of the story together. Now, as we started talking about this and saying, all right, what are the things that we can continue to do to make people welcome, to make it easy for someone to come here? <clears throat> 17 years ago, this church took a great step. It happened before I got here. They took the step of doing some improvements to the building. Uh, lobby, adding the gymnasium, improving and adding classrooms. And it was just a great step forward for this church. But it was also a great sacrifice. Well, 17 years later, our elders have said we are at a time when we need to take another step of improvement and renovation here in our facilities. Along with this initiative for the story, this fall we're going to launch an initiative called Faith for the Future, the next chapter. And it involves three things. It involves, first, a donation for the hurting in our community. 10% of everything that's given in this special initiative is going to go for the hurting and needy in this community so that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus. And you say, well, 10% 10, 10 of what? 10% of all our collections on Sunday morning? What, what are you talking about? We're going to do a special giving this year. Some have been involved with things before capital initiatives but we're going to take a two-year pledge. It's a two-year pledge above our own uh, tithes and offerings, above whatever it is that you or I and my wife and I give on Sunday mornings. And we're going to ask the church to say, could you sacrifice to do about three things? 10% of it is going to go to right off the top of whatever's given is going to go to our community. And then about half the money that's remaining is going to go towards paying for the debt that's currently costing us about $40,000 a year in payments. It's going to come due in 2014 anyway, and we'd have to turn around and refinance. And our shepherds have challenged us, we'd like to see that debt paid off through this capital initiative. There's also some reserves that need to be dealt with for things like a, a roof that eventually they're telling us we're going to have to redo it. Large expenses that we just can't do out of a regular budget because of their size. The other half of those funds are going to go towards creating a welcoming environment. Uh, I had someone who looked at our church website and was looking at us and looking at our graphics and was, was quite impressed and said, wow, man, I see a lot of cool things there. And then they said, we showed up at the building and we walked in your auditorium. And your website said, today. And your auditorium said, whoa, wow, 1970 what? Um, there are things in my house I don't notice anymore. Does this, does this work the same way for you? That you, you, you? You walk in certain rooms in your house and you don't even notice something until somebody who hadn't been there before walks in and says, what's that stain? Oh, well, uh, yeah, that happened seven years ago, actually, and I, I, I was going to take care of that. One of the kids stopped up the shower and the water flowed. And, I mean, you know, th th those, those kind of issues. I've gotten used to orange and blue. I, I don't even notice it anymore. I don't even notice that when somebody walks in and says, man, this building feels like. But what we found is that in order to take this next step forward, I had somebody describe it this way. They said, if somebody pulls up to your house to talk to you about something and they share something interesting with you, but you look out and they're writing in the 1973 Gremlin, you say, wow, that's, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Well, it's, it's time, I guess, to at least get a 2000 Camry. Maybe that's the way we're looking at it. There are some renovations that we're planning to do here in this auditorium, as well as in the lobby, the, the area where most of our guests come most often. Anybody who sits in the back, I don't have to explain to you that if you happen to sit in the back when a time when there are people in the lobby, you can hear the people in the lobby just as easy as you can hear the person standing up here. One of the things that is going to happen is there's going to be a sound lock put, two sets of doors in the lobby. This space itself will be renovated. We will say goodbye to the orange and the blue. The stage will be done properly. Our temporary curtains will go away, and we will renovate this auditorium in a way that will bring it up to standards for, well, at least for our decade. Um, for instance, the wiring that, that the sound system, and I've had different people say, man, we can't hear. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. The wiring for this sound system was pulled in 1973. Skip uh, Trail actually told me before he passed that he and his dad helped to, to do that. So we've got some updating to do with that and with the, the uh, video and with, the, with the, the auditorium itself and then in the lobby. Um, we're looking to make more space in our lobby, actually make a little more room out there and move the 
Haiti Coffee, which has been hiding in this back uh, kitchen, out into a kind of coffee cafe area out there for fellowship. I I'm excited about it. On January 22nd, we're going to show you some pictures of what it'll look like, Lord willing, because we're, just, we're still right in the middle of working with this, with uh, the uh, architects and such. Now, somebody says, man, what is all this going to cost? Well, you see on the screen, between 2.2 and 2.4, and that's a range because we're still trying to sort that out. When the architects come back with all of their designs and recommendations and the shepherds have a chance to look at that, then we'll be able to share with you what that actual number is. Whatever's given is what we will do. And let me say that slow. Whatever you pledge, whatever this church says, here's what we'll do, that's the budget we're going to work with. You need to know that for number one. We're not going to sign contracts and say, fine, we're going to do all this renovation and hope Hope that somebody gives that money. No, that's not what we're going to do. On or about March the 25th, I think it is, the second to last Sunday in March, we're going to have a day when we're going to turn in our pledges. My wife and I will be praying and turning in our pledge to say, here's what we can give above our normal contribution over the next two years. And then on April 1st, we'll have a day of, uh, of celebration and excitement, and we will give the first fruits of that. And only then will things begin to happen work-wise. Somebody said, what if we don't get enough to do all we want to do? Well, then we will do less because we're just not going to go into long-term debt to do more renovation to this property. Most of you are also probably, or some of you may be saying, oh, well, I guess this means we're not planning on buying a new piece of property and building a 20 or $30 million building down in South Charlotte like we were talking about maybe, you know, five or 10 years ago. Yeah, that's true. We believe that God has put us in a place that we can use and that we can hopefully grow in and grow from and we'll talk more about the ways that we might look to grow. But we do believe that we're going to be right here using 4900 Providence Road for the foreseeable future. And it's time that we do some renovations and updating. And it's time we address the debt issue. Now, one of our elders, and he gave me permission to quote him, said an interesting thing when, as we were talking about this. He said, this is a crummy time to be trying to raise a bunch of money. He said, I mean, the economy and everything else. And uh, I said, yeah, you're right. He said, but that's one of the things that is exciting. It is a faith step. This is not something we're going to be able to do by just saying, okay, no problem. It is a faith step. So as you think about it, as you pray about it, I would simply ask you, God, guide us. Guide our shepherds. Guide us that we can take this step of faith together. I'm going to ask Brother Ken Bruchaber, who is the leading as chairman of our elders this year, to come and after a comment to lead us in a word of prayer. This campaign requires money. And a uh, $5 bill. Karen and I, my wife, stopped at Wendy's yesterday for lunch. And we were able to buy our lunch for $5. You know, it would not be real difficult for me to give this $5 to this campaign. And my guess is everybody in here could do something similar to be able to participate. But I don't want your money. I'm going to ask you for what I believe may be something more difficult. I'm asking you to communicate with us, to hold us accountable for communicating with you throughout this campaign because we get in meetings, and those that are going to be involved are going to be in meetings, and they're going to know what's going on. And we're going to make a comment to you or an announcement to you, and we think we've communicated. But the odds are we didn't communicate enough. So it's something that everyone here can do is feedback, communicate with us, tell us when we're not telling you enough so that you can be informed as well. That's one of the reasons for future at PRCOC is to give you a vehicle to communicate back with us because we feel it's very important to communicate with you. And we know that that's an area that we have been weak in in the past and we want to improve that. And so I'm asking you to hold us accountable for that communication. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day and for the opportunity that we've had to be in your house. Father, for the challenge that's being put before us Father, for the opportunity that we have to see your handiwork because we know that you are in control of all things and that where there is 
Hopelessness, you provide hope. Mm -hmm. Where there is concern, distress, you provide strength and courage. You have the sight that we don't see. You have the future. Help us to be a part of that future in reaching many souls for you as we embark upon this campaign and look for the ways that you will be glorified by us taking a small seed the size of a mustard and putting that faith to work to move the mountains you've set before us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Ken. Thank you to our shepherds. We want to continue to pray about all this again in two weeks in a combined Bible class presentation on January 22nd. We're going to share more details with you, be able to answer more questions for you. But please be praying as we launch into faith for the future. We have a God who is bigger than all our needs and even all our goals. Can I get an oh yeah? Would you stand together with me and let's say our scripture for this month one more time. And can I ask you to say it passionately? Would this be good practice? Okay. Go ahead and lean over the person next to you and say, be passionate. Just say, here we go. All right. <laughs> Teach us to number our days aright that we may gain a heart of wisdom. This morning, the wisest thing you could do if you've never given your heart and life to Jesus is to say, Jesus, I'm yours. Can I get a passionate amen? amen. This morning, if you are hurting, the best place to bring your hurts is to the God who loves you so. Can I get a passionate, oh yeah. Amen. This morning, if you are here and you don't have the readiness to meet Jesus today, don't say someday, say today. If you're not ready, then we would love to help you be ready to live that week, month, year. What's God going to give us? We don't know. To number our days and live passionately with no regrets. And this morning, as always, that front row is open. While we sing together, if you're in need, won't you come?